In verse 3, I mentioned about the last part I left out was but the 144,000. The middle of that verse. You see that? Now, who are these? This is not. This is going to be intensely interesting. Which were redeemed from the earth. These people were redeemed from the earth. I explained that in our last teaching. Why? Because they came out of the earth, came out of great tribulation. That perfectly matches with Revelation 7. These are they that came out of great tribulation from the earth. Now look at verse 4, which I read. They are virgins, right? Now read the next part. These are they which follow the Lamb. See? They follow the Lamb. Like bridesmaids following the following the wedding procession ceremony. Look at this, whithersoever he goeth. Why? Because the Lamb has the bride, the Lamb's wife, at Revelation chapter 19. So they're following this procession with the bride and groom. But let's keep reading. These were redeemed from among men. So among the men of the world, they're redeemed from them. Why? Because the men of the world take the mark of the beast. So these are redeemed from that. Okay, keep reading. Being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. So notice that they are known as first fruits to both to God and the Lamb. Now this becomes a doctrinal issue against dispensationalism. So, because these people are known as first fruits, some people who hate dispensationalism, they try to say that these first fruits are Christians, not Jews. Because look at 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Why is there so much heresy, Pastor? This is so confusing. It's simple, because it's one of the deepest doctrinal books in your body book. But it's easily filtered out. You might say, no, it's not. Yeah, if you're strong in Pauline doctrine, mm -hmm. Christian doctrine. That's why I keep telling you, don't study, don't first delve into revelation or conspiracy stuff or deep doctrine. Delve in something foundational, basic to a Christian. That way, the deeper stuff you can better comprehend. Mm -hmm. Can a baby eventually eat meat if the baby keeps ignoring the milk and chewing the meat? can't. So that malfunctions in your spiritual growth. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and then we'll read verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the what? First fruits of them that slept. Verse 23. But every man in his own order. Christ the first fruit. See that? Afterwards they there are Christ that is coming. Verse 24, then come at the what? And that's tribulation. So notice that verse 23, dispensationalists argue that there is dispensational raptures. There is a pre-tribulation rapture before the tribulation. I'm not going to expound on that. I explained that intensely in the previous video. And there is another rapture sometime in the middle or the end of the tribulation where it's conditional based on faith and works. How do you prove that? Because there's an order of this verse 21. See? This rapture. Now some people like to say this is just a general resurrection, not a rapture. But if you keep reading from verses 35 all the way to 56, you know that's a rapture. They're going up at the sound of God's trumpet voice. See that? So it's not just a resurrection. Now, considering this is a rapture then, in Christ the first fruits at verse 23, we say these are Old Testament saints. The second part of verse 23, we say that's the Christian church, because we are the body of Christ, they are Christ. Verse 24, that's obviously tribulation because of the word end. Matthew 24, endure to the end. Revelation chapter 1 through 22 mentions about holding fast to the end. Now, this is the problem. We can't argue that the tribulation Jews 
are not the first fruits of 1 Corinthians 15. Remember, dispensationalists argue that the first fruits of 1 Corinthians 15 are Old Testament saints. Because there's an order of rapture. And after Christ, the first fruits, it's the, it's the church. And then after the church, then it's uh, tribulation sent over here. 141,007. Now, how are, we, uh, how are we going to argue when Revelation 14 argues that they're the first fruits, right? Well, this is very, very interesting. A lot of people, they just don't study the scriptures. Go back to Revelation 14. One, you what? Read the verse as it what? Says. Yeah. You know what first fruits mean? The, the primary, the big fruits, primary, main, important fruits, glean from the harvest. Because when they're harvesting, they give the first fruits to the Lord. They give the first of what they have to the Lord, and then the remaining part, uh, they can glean some of that, while some of it can go to the uh, Lord's work as well. But aside from that, we see over here primary fruits from harvesting, right? Now, all you have to look is the context. Where are they redeemed from, right? That word is redeemed. Did you notice that in your Bible, in Revelation 14? Now, I'm going to say it again. Don't look at me like a tree full of owls. Look at the verse. Don't just say, oh, 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 oh. Look at the verse. These are first fruits that were redeemed from where? From the earth. Redeemed. Isn't that a rapture word at Ephesians 1? Hmm, that's good. Ephesians 4 and Romans 8. You might say, what are the verses? Just read the verse. Okay, Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. Ephesians 4, 30. And Romans 8. Read the latter part of the whole chapter. You'll notice that when it talks about the rapture, it calls it redemption. Ah, okay. Now, our redemption is based on no works, remember? And it's based by no works purely from Christ's work. Christ paid it all. But these people, when you compare Revelation, I showed it to you before Revelation 12, 17. Revelation chapter 12 and verse uh, 11. And Revelation chapter 7, where they came out of great tribulation, it's based off of works here, their redemption. And not only that, it's redeemed from where? Remember I read that? From the earth, which is in what? Tribulation. Wait a minute. Go back to 1 Corinthians 15 right there. The context is not harvesting from the earth during the tribulation timeline. The context of 1 Corinthians 15 is all of God's children in general. Mm. That's why it says order. It doesn't mention here coming out of great tribulation at verse 15. But the context of Revelation 14 is coming out of the tribulation that's in the world. So obviously, if I'm going to be doing some sort of harvesting, before I do the main harvest, I'm going to take the first fruits. Who's the first people that I'm going to be focusing on at the... Uh, at their time of rapture, aka resurrection, etc. I'm going to go for the saints of God. So I'm going to go for the tribulation saints over here, redeem them from the earth. Why? Because later on, if you read 
Revelation 14, verses 13 through 20. Verse 13 through 20. We're going to come there later on. But look at that harvesting. It has nothing to do with the Christian time period. This is the end times of tribulation. Yeah. There's a primary what? The tribulation saints. But what's the next harvesting? You don't want it. Because if you look at Revelation 20 as well as Revelation 14, the last half, the Bible focuses on just the resurrection during the timeline of the tribulation. Now look at this. What's the book title? Is this Paul to the church of Ephesus? Paul to the church of Galatia? Paul to the uh, church of Corinth, Corinth and Rome? No. This is the title of the book is what? Revelation. So this is a tribulation application. The only uh, allowance we give is Revelation 2 to 3, but that's only a spiritual application 2, I showed you. It's a spiritual application 1, and number 2, the tribulation did not start until Revelation 6. See that? But then Revelation 6 and 14 and onward, church is not mentioned. See, so this is all tribulation timeline. So that's the doctrine where God's saying, during the tribulation timeline, I'm going to take these tribulation saints up, watch as I can rescue them from what I'm going to pour out on Armageddon and my judgment upon the world. How about that? See, that's why if you believe in two raptures, see that? If you believe in various forms in 1 Corinthians 15, Revelation 14, of harvesting for the rapture, this is going to click and make sense. Okay, now, let's go back to Revelation 14. Revelation chapter 14. We come a lot, this is, dispensationalism is an amazing doctrine. If some of you did not understand, I would highly recommend watch Amazing Dispensational Truth Amen. from Genesis to Revelation. And then you're going to find, uh, find the playlist Dispensationalism in our YouTube channel. And watch all the videos and you'd be amazed. It'll become enlightening, revealing. It'll open your eyes so much. Okay. Now, this is playing at Revelation 14.5. This is Jewish. Look at this. And in their mouth was found no what? Guile. See, these were considered that as no guile in their mouth. What? For they are without fault before the throne of God. When they arrived at God's throne when they're raptured, they're without fault. Well, wait a minute over here. Um, don't Christians, are we guilty with guile? with sin, and etc. If you say that you're not, then you're crazy. Oh. So, look at the book of Luke, chapter 1. Look at the Old Testament sense. The Old Testament sense was not referring, it was never referring in the Old Testament sense where Jesus Christ, on his finished work, that it paid it all and then, based on that, paid it all, that we are sinless and without spot. We can't say that. You might say, no, you can say that. No, if you look at Revelation 12 again, and Revelation 7, I taught you that in order to maintain their salvation is where they have to love not their lives to the death with their testimony. See that? That's a lot of works. And then with the blood of Jesus Christ, which I taught you at Revelation 7, they have to wash it themselves in the blood of Jesus Christ. See, they have to make the work and effort. All right. Look at Luke chapter 1. Now, did Jesus die, bury, and resurrect you? That's Luke 1. No. So he can't have a finished work. But look at this one. Look at Luke chapter 1 in the Old Testament, what God considers righteousness. Luke 1, yeah. verse 6. And they were both what? Righteous before God. See, be like Revelation 14, before the throne of God. Based on what? Faith in uh, 
Jesus Christ, or he painted, no, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, what? Blameless. Blameless. That matches with that guilt in Revelation 14. See? This is Jewish. This is Jewish. This is not Christian interpretation. So it's based on their works. 